With just two weeks left in the IHSA basketball season, our local schools are getting ready for their one shining moment. Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in to Naperville Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Joe Kennedy. Postseason bowling action continues to roll on this week, but let's first begin with some hoops. In girls basketball, Wabonzi Valley remains unbeaten in the DVC, partially thanks to sophomore guard Daniela Porcozo already reaching 1,000 career points. Niqua Valley, who came up just a point short against the Warriors earlier this month, sit in second in conference. Let's head to our first highlights as the Wildcats welcomed Naperville Central. Round two of DVC girls basketball action between Niqua Valley and Naperville Central is on. This time at Niqua as the Wildcats look to sweep the Redhawks on the series season. The first match saw Niqua win 65-47 and the Redhawks look to strike back snapping a two game losing streak. We pick things up with the Wildcats up 6-3 early as Zoe Navarro finds Nalia Clifford who chucks it over to Kylie Norcus all alone for the easy layup to put Niqua up 8-3. On the next possession the Red Hawks look to throw the ball in but Quinn Siegel tips it away. The ball finds its way to Clifford who passes it to Navarro for another quick strike to put Niqua up 10-3. The Wildcats are now looking to get the long range game going as Caitlin Washington passes it to Norcus who has plenty of time to flush it in a perfect three ball. The Wildcats now go up 17-3. Nikwa continues this a couple possessions later. Up now 19-5, its roles are reversed as Norcus now passes it over to Washington and from the same area on the court she buries in the long three ball. Nikwa now goes up 22-5. Washington would provide some action on defense. The Red Hawks looking to get some offense going, but Washington acts like an NFL defender reading the pass and taking it for herself back for the layup to make it a 26-7 game for the Wildcats. The Red Hawks would continue to struggle on both phases of the ball, including defense, as Clifford takes the throw in from Washington and buries another three to make it 29-9 Niqua. They would lead by the score of 31-9 at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, Washington continues to be a game wrecker for the Wildcats. Here she intercepts another pass from Central and takes it back for another layup seconds into the second quarter to make it 33-9 Niqua. Naperville Central will try to get some offense going on the next possession as Annabelle Kreitzer pump fakes the Niqua defense and buries in a mid-range shot to make it 33-11 on the next possession. Later, it's Kreitzer providing the ammunition as she passes it to Adriana Villanova, who just gets in the layup to generate some more offense for the Red Hawks. However, Niqua would put the game away from there as Norcus gets her hands on another three-point attempt that she once again wouldn't miss. She and Washington would combine for over half of Niqua's points on the night. Later on, it's Washington putting the dagger in the heart as she's all alone on the other side of the court and buries through another three. The duo of Norcus and Washington is too much for the Red Hawks as Niqua sweeps the series against Central, winning game two 69-36. Moving over to boys basketball, Wabonzi looks to continue its perfect season as they face a tough Matia team that is on a roll of its own. After that, we'll take a look at Niqua Valley visiting Naperville Central. The Eola Road rivalry matchup sees the 16-7 Matia Valley Mustangs play host to undefeated Wabonzi Valley. The Mustangs look to avenge their loss back in December at Wabonzi. The Warriors look to keep their perfect season going and climb the ranks going into the final stretch of the season. Wabonzi starts hot with a deep three from Matt Sessom to make it 3-1. Matia looks to get some life and Will Ashford cuts inside before posterizing the defender. A beautiful pass and then finish from the Mustangs. But going the other way, the Warriors grab the momentum right back with a breakaway slam by Trey Blissett. Now into the second quarter, Trey Watkins hits an open three and extends the Mustangs lead to 2013. On the other end, Wabonzi's Moses Wilson hits a wide open three of his own to end the scoreless run they had starting the second. After trailing for much of the first half, Tyree Coleman has a wide open deep three and nails it. The Warriors are now on top, 23-22. Into the third quarter, the Mustangs quickly tie it up at 25 as Daniel hits a corner three. 
Coleman took over for the Warriors in the second half, starting with this nice crossover into a floater to give Wabonzi a 29-25 lead. Later in the quarter, Jake Nosek takes one step in front of the logo to hit a deep three. Mattia retakes the lead at 35-34. At the start of the fourth, Mustang Will Ashford slams home back-to-back -back dunks to get the lead to 41-38. After a fight down low, Coleman comes up with it and hits a spinning layup to bring the Warriors within one. As the game is ticking down, Wilson rips the ball out and on the ensuing possession, Blissett hits a spinning layup to take the lead at 44-43. After a couple of free throws, Wabonzi keeps their undefeated season going and goes 2-0 in the Eola Road rivalry with a 48-45 arena-shaking victory. It's a special night here at Naperville Central High School as the school inducts its newest Red Hawk legends into the Athletic Hall of Fame. We also have a DVC battle on the courts as the Red Hawks host the Nequa Valley Wildcats. Central is trying to get their first conference win, while the Wildcats aim to extend their winning streak to six. The Red Hawks look to get things going as Preston Kuda dishes it to Ross Dezer, and he gets the tough layup shot to go and the foul. Red Hawks down 6-5 early in the first quarter. The Wildcats turn on offense now as Colin Garrity has the ball but gets pickpocketed by TJ Hillman and we're going the other way. Hillman pulls a pump fake and hits the layup and we're all tied at seven. The Wildcats respond with some solid passing. Joe Belgro finds Luke Palaski wide open, who nails a three ball from the corner. Nequa Valley closes out the first quarter with a 15-11 lead. Naperville Central's Kuda feeds the ball to Dezer, and he takes on two defenders. He pulls some nice moves to sink the layup and brings the Hawks within two. Nequa Valley is looking to get some breathing room. Danny Podpora dishes it to Balgro, and he sends it to Nathan Fiore, who hits the jumper. The Wildcats lead 22-18. Under 30 seconds to go, and the Wildcats look to extend their lead. Whitman Charbonneau dishes it to Luke Kincaid, and he swings it back to Charbonneau, who buries the floater for two. The Red Hawks try to score as TJ Hillman heaves it from half court, but his shot is off the mark. Nequa leads 30-24 over Naperville Central at the half. Central's Jack Gervas swings it inside to Dezer. He takes two Wildcats for a spin and nails his tough layup for two. Red Hawks trail by four. Nico looks to build some momentum on offense, and Garrity finds John Bieber down in the corner and splash. He drains the three and the Wildcats lead 33-26. Balgro inbounds the ball and dishes it to Garrity. He decides to take the shot himself and nails the trifecta from downtown. Wildcats close out the third quarter with a 47-33 lead. The Red Hawks are still fighting on here in the fourth quarter. Dezer floats it to Jack first and he gets this tough layup to go to pull Central within 10 points. A little later on in the fourth, Garrity takes this one down the other end of the court and once again, just like last time, he hits another tray for Nikwa and ends the night with 13 points. Cats are up 51-37. Dezer attacks the paint and goes for the layup, misses but gets his own rebounds and this time gets it to go. It was not enough though as the Wildcats take this one 61-43 to get their sixth consecutive win while the Red Hawks drop to 0-7 in DVC play. It's been 20 years since Candace Parker led Naperville Central girls basketball to a second consecutive state title. This weekend she returned home to watch her daughter play her alma mater. We'll have more after the break. It's a robotic money expert. Clever. How do I start a savings habit? Famous cabbage. Savings habit. Shaving rabbits. Tech can make life simpler, but when it comes to savings habits, nothing's as simple as BMO. A BMO savings account helps you build the habit with a cash reward every month you save. Cash reward? Ingenious. Sardine fest. This year's top prize goes to BMO. I'm just in it for the saving. But it's nice to be recognized. BMO. What's the matter, boy? What are you trying to tell me? Is something wrong? We live in a safe community, but not a crime-free community. If you see something, say something. Naperville Animal Crime Stoppers. 
Yes, I'd like to report a case of animal cruelty and neglect. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Naperville Central could have honored Candace Parker in the 2004 state team against any opponents, but thought to make it special. We have more on the Red Hawks matching up against Parker's daughter in our latest feature story here on NSW. It's been 20 years since Candace Parker led Naperville Central girls basketball to a second consecutive state championship. On Saturday night, the future Hall of Famer returns home along with her teammates and other Red Hawk alumni to celebrate their historic seasons on the hardwood. It's crazy 20 years later just seeing everybody with their families and friends and connecting with people. We got Petey making faces in the back here. Just like old times. Just like old times. The idea for the anniversary celebration started when two-time state champion and 2006 graduate Erica Carter was selected to Naperville Central's Athletic Hall of Fame class of 2024. That ceremony was held on Friday, January 26th. And at some point I'm like, you know, we have an open day on the 27th, Erica's already going to be here. Wouldn't it be great if we could get the state championship girls back? I had someone to talk to Candace about it and she says, well, maybe my daughter's team can come out and play. Parker was joined by her son, Air, and many of her family, friends, and key members from the state team, like Tiffany Hudson and Rachel Chrissy. But what also made the day so special was watching Parker's daughter, Lila Williams, and Campbell Hall High School face off against Naperville Central. Although she didn't play because of injury, it was not her first time on the NCHS court. It means a lot because, you know, m my daughter knows where I came from. She's been back. She came, came to the Naperville Central camp and uh, she was bummed she couldn't play today because she hurt her knee. But um, it was just amazing to see everybody that came out to, to watch her team and, and Naperville Central play. Williams attended a Naperville Central basketball camp in the summer of eighth grade while her mom was with the Chicago Sky. She even met some current Red Hawks with whom she still keeps in touch with. I actually met my friend Trinity here and we're still close, we still talk like everything and then I still met some friends here so I'm sad that I couldn't get to see them because they had basketball but it was like amazing to like actually see where my mom like won it. Despite Williams' injury, Campbell Hall pulled away from Naperville Central in the second half to win the game by 10 points. At halftime, former Red Hawks were honored, spanning from the class of 1979 to the present day. The highlight was, of course, recognizing both the 2003 and 2004 state championship teams. The 2003 team is the first one to win a state championship, and I, I usually say that was like a magic carpet ride. You know, everything was awesome, everything went right. And then the 2004 team was more like working in the coal mine and never seeing the light of day until the championship game was over. Because, you know, nothing short of winning it again would have been successful. What might have got them out of the coal mine and into the light was a little motivation from an all-time great sports movie. A miracle came out in 2004. We went to see it as a team. You know, Herb Brooks, actor, says, this is, their time is over. This is our time. This is our time. <laughs> I told our girls, well, let me tell you something. That's what everybody else is saying, but this is still our time. We're not done yet. It was still their time indeed, as Naperville Central girls basketball didn't need a miracle, just one of the best high school basketball players of all time. During Parker's junior and senior year, Nussbaum says that the Red Hawks went 59-0 in games she played. Parker has continued to win at every level she's competed in, including two national championships at Tennessee and three WNBA championships, most recently in 2021 with her hometown Chicago Sky and in 2023 with the Las Vegas Aces. Although times change, people grow up and the style of basketball keeps evolving, most of the former Red Hawks from Saturday nights can share something in common. That's Andy Nussbaum leading the charge of the Red and White, who has been at the helm since 1988. Noos is like the best human. I just love him. Um, we keep in contact and, you know, he always checks in on me and I do the same with him. And um, it's amazing to be able to come back and see that he's still coaching and still loving what he does. 
and it's also amazing to see how much he cares. I mean, he like knows everybody and um, everybody loves him. I mean, he sang the national anthem today, so it was super special. But I just love News. Um, I really like him as a coach, but I just love him as a, as a human. You know what I mean? So I'm just happy he's in my life. For Naperville Sports Weekly, I'm Joe Kennedy. Girls wrestling continues to rise throughout the area, and some of our local teams sent wrestlers to the first ever IHSA regionals this weekend. We'll see how they did after the break. Local news is your lifeline. Let the Daily Herald help you navigate your world with solid reporting, good advice, and a much needed diversion or two. Shepherd High School is one of eight sites for the first ever IHSA Girls Wrestling Regionals. Four of our area teams have wrestlers alive for day two, looking to punch their tickets to sectionals in two weeks at Schaumburg. We start with the 105 pound fifth place match with Naperville North's K.E. Wong hitting reverse mode on Glenbard South's Valerie Elegia. Wong wants to end her day on a high note, and she does it in dominating fashion, taking fifth place by a major decision. Nadia Shaikiv from Glenbard West wins the 105 pound championship. In the fifth place bout at 115, Naperville Central's Grace Mellick rolls Wheaton Warmville South star Duncan onto her back to grab two points. Later on, Duncan takes down Mellick, and this time she's the one on top. All Duncan has to do is make the pin, and that seals the deal. Staying at 115, this time in the third place match as Glenbard West Carolina Konopka pins Niqua Valley's Veronica Arabova. That champion at 115 pounds is Sofia Figueroa from Andrew, who takes care of Matias Yuliana Shestova via the pin. The Mustangs get a winner in the Constellation Finals with Rosie Pisari. Her opponent is Andrews Alam Mihar, and Pisari gets her on her back and gets the pin to finish fifth. At the 145 pound championship, Batavia Sydney Perry pins her way to a first place spot over Downers Grove North's Natalia Cruz. After a great day on the mats, the first ever girls wrestling regional title lands in the hands of the Andrew Thunderbolts. Naperville Central comes in ninth as the best finish for our area schools in the regional. We'll move over to gymnastics now with our local schools competing in the DVC championship. Then let's head to Bloomington Normal for the IHSA state dance finals. Our area teams are lined up and ready for the girls' gymnastics DVC championships at Nequa Valley. Now they look to dethrone four-time defending DVC champions DeKalb. We begin on the vault with Naperville Central's Harley Sandbrooks attempting a front handspring half that's good enough for an 8.55. Up next is Haley Mitchell from the Valley as her attempt is similar to Sandbrooks and she nabs an 8.32. The Barbs then boost up the scoring with Caitlin Liesefeld, who does a full-on front tuck that lands her a 9.07 score. Here comes her teammate Bella Simpson, and she goes all out with a back handspring and pike which lands her a 9.45, the top score on the night. More action from the Barbs, this time from Gianna Goff on the uneven bars. After a couple of swings, she goes airborne and lands a solid 8.5. Although Red Hawk Gabby Tapia continues her swing with a nice double back tuck that gets her a score of 8.52. Ella Buckenauer for the Valley Co-op also tries out the double back tuck and it's good enough to put her right on the 8th spot. Buckenauer remains on point by keeping her balance on the beam and does a back tuck to get another score of 8. Kara Jin continues to help out the cause with her moves and look out below, Jin sticks the landing and scores an 8.4. The Huskies get a strong showing on the beam as well from Aaron Arnold. This performance is good enough for an 8.3. On the floor exercise, Tapia continues attacking her skills with a front tuck and a couple of back handsprings. A strong outing helps her to an 8.45 and the second best all around. 
It's Lucia Caruso's turn who does some tucks and handsprings and even adds on a twist. Caruso performs her way to an outstanding 9.1. Ava Koberman for Naperville North is doing what she can for the dogs, and the score of 8.4 will do the trick on the floor exercise. Although this night was all about the DeKalb Barbs, as Simpson dominates in all the events, scoring a 9.4 on the floor, and that helps her to the best all around. These scores help Simpson and the DeKalb Barbs walk away with their fifth straight DVC plaque. It's time for the annual IHSA Competitive Dance State Finals at Grossinger Motors Arena. Four local teams advanced to the big stage in Bloomington. Bennett Academy fell just shy of qualification in Class 2A, while Matia Valley missed the cut in 3A. Naperville North and Nequa Valley punched their tickets, while Naperville Central topped them all as sectional champions. Wabonzi Valley took third in the 3A Fieldcrest sectional, securing a spot at state as well. However, following the Friday preliminary rounds, only Naperville North was one of the 12 teams moving on to the finals after an 8th place finish with a score of 88.82. Stevenson was the top team in the prelims, just ahead of St. Charles East in Barrington. In the final round on Saturday at Grossinger Motors Arena, 12 schools competed with their routines and Downers Grove South took 12th place with a score of 85.88. Andrew took 11th here with a score of 86.84. The lone area school to advance to the finals is Naperville North, which followed last year's performance with an 87.72 for 10th place overall. They've placed in the top 10 in the last four IHSA competitions. Coming in ninth place is Bartlett with an 89.82. Maine South takes eighth place with a 90.58. Here we see York who takes seventh with a score of 90.66. Lines Township now just gets past York into 6th with a score of 90.98. Fremds improves from 11th in the prelims to 5th place with a 92.32. It's the most significant jump of any school from Friday to Saturday. St. Charles East just missed out of the top 3 here with a 94.33. Lake Park qualified fourth on Friday, but improved to take home hardware with a 94.82 from the judges, good for third place in the event from the defending champs. The final two places were decided by the thinnest of margins as Barrington takes second with a 96.24. It's their second year in a row, finishing as runner-up. That left Stevenson in first place with a 96.34. Their routine scored the second highest out of any classes as they rounded out the top three with the same schools as last year's competition. Let's head to Grossinger Motors Arena in Bloomington, where we have our girls play the week from Naperville North Dance. The Huskies were our lone local school to advance to the IHSA Class 3A state finals. In their performance, Naperville North impressed the judges and secured 10th place with a score of 87.72. It's the fourth straight year that the Huskies have finished inside the top 10 at the IHSA finals. What a great way to finish the season for Naperville North. Matia Valley, Wabonzi Valley, and Naperville Central sent their teams to the competition, but did not get past the prelims. When we return, let's wrap up the show in the pool as Bennett takes on West Chicago for senior night. Do you want all the most exciting highlights from your student athlete's high school career? Relive all your favorite stories and moments from the past few seasons of Naperville Sports Weekly by purchasing digital downloads. Visit nctv17.org slash shop to order today. It's a robotic money expert. Clever. How do I start a savings habit? Famous cabbage. Savings habit. Shaving rabbits. 
Tech can make life simpler, but when it comes to savings habits, nothing's as simple as BMO. A BMO savings account helps you build the habit with a cash reward every month you save. Cash reward? Ingenious. Sardine Fest. This year's top prize goes to BMO. I'm just in it for the saving. But it's nice to be recognized. BMO. We are at West Chicago High School for a boys swimming dual meet. It's also senior night for both Bennett Academy and the West Chicago Co-op as both teams honor all their seniors before jumping in the water. We start this one off with the 200 yard freestyle where the West Chicago Co-op team gets off to a great start from Brady Johnson, Ryan Fors, Dylan Clark, and Alex Simonovich. The Co-op dominated the 200 yard freestyle with the final time of a minute 38. Next is the 50-yard freestyle, we got a good battle in the pool between West Chicago's Brady Johnson, Ryan Fors, and Bennett Academy's Jake Eukinis. The race goes down to the wire, but in the end, Johnson beats out Fors and Eukinis and sets a new record time at 20.68 seconds. The 100-yard butterfly is a close one between West Chicago's Dylan Clark and Bennett's Eukinis. These two would be neck and neck down the stretch, but Clark edges out Eukinis with a time of 56.01 seconds. From the butterfly to the backstroke, also the 100 yard version, and we also got another close one here between West Chicago's Tommy Eng and Bennett's Harlan Apple. The two keep pushing to the very end, and Ang nearly beats Apple to take this one with a time of 57.55 seconds. In the final race of the evening, we have the 400-yard freestyle relay. The West Chicago group of Brady Jordan, Nate Lindstrom, Tommy Ang, and Sam Ortiz were able to set the tone and did not look back. Ortiz closes the race out as the West Chicago Co-op wins the meet by a final score of 113-57. Our boys play of the week sees Mattia Valley's Will Ashford rise above the rim for a slam over a Wabanzi defender. Opening minutes of the game, the Mustangs get the ball past half court. Dominic Smith cuts down the baseline and lays it off to Ashford, who wastes no time to dunk all over the defender. A great pass and an even better finish as it sparks some life for Mattia. Let's take one more look at the play. Ashford has had some great dunks this season, but this one might be the best. That will wrap things up for tonight's show of NSW. Make sure to come back next week as three more sports enter the postseason. You can find our past highlights, feature stories, and community sports on nctv17.org and our NCTV17 Sports YouTube channel. You can also find us on social media at NCTV17 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Naperville Sports Weekly, I'm Joe Kennedy.